It's the WSN Podcast, The Three Wise Men. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Nate Garlock and Miles Holiday, and our special guest tonight, Shawnee Senior Wide Receiver Michael Garlock. What a great night, guys. Michael <laughs> Surprise Garlock. All right, Michael yeah. Surprise yeah. Garlock. Uh, you, look, you guys pulled one off on me, you know, and listen, he's not the greatest secret keeper in the world, right? Like, if, I don't know when exactly you guys set this up, but if he, he managed to sit on it for a minute, so yeah. uh, I'm a little impressed, I, I gotta be honest. I told him last week on the phone, I said, you do not reveal this secret. <laughs> the best, though, was the law from Nate when he saw him. Oh, yeah. What are you doing what are you here? here? <laughs> Don't you have chores to do? Or no, no, listen, when last time I saw him, he was walking out the door to go to his girlfriend's house. I didn't think he was going to show up to meet a strange man in an abandoned building out in the country somewhere. <laughs> how like, I, like, I, didn't, I didn't think that was happening. Sure, mister, I'll be there. <laughs> Well, anyways, Michael, how you doing tonight, brother? I'm pretty good. Yeah, I awesome. Thank you so much for coming on and surprising your dad. And it, it's going to be a good show. Oh yeah, no problem. All right, let's get right to it, guys. The Diamond Dave Bowen, best thing we saw all week. Miles, we'll start with you. Yeah, I got a couple. I know it's going to surprise you, right? Uh, the first one, I was very fortunate last Saturday to broadcast uh, New Bremen volleyball against Tenor volleyball with JKB Jennifer Keep back for WSN. Fellas, this is one of the top five events I've ever had the privilege of being at and broadcasting. This was a Trenor team that had only lost eight sets all year long, got down by two sets, and then came back and won the last three wow. to knock over the defending state champ, New Bremen. It was absolutely electric in there. Uh, Paige Gamby was phenomenal for Tenora. Tatum Kreps, who's a big middle. The, the win three straight sets after being down two to New Bremen. Absolutely insane. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I mean, you do a lot of volleyball coverage. How rare is that? I mean, you can see it in regular season games between two sub teams, you know, momentum, but these are two state-ranked teams. Yeah, not, not against New Bremen, right? right. No, no. Nope. I, and you could see it, right? It was just the mental fatigue from Tenora just bouncing back, bouncing back, getting the ball up time and time again, and you could see the ladies for New Bremen, you know, eventually that just wears you down mentally, and that's what transpired. Now, my second one, talking about wearing you down, LCC Brady Parker, quarterback lead all night long against Pandora Gilboa. He was a rock, just hammering against the shore, man. He was fantastic. Nate, best thing you saw all week. Yeah, for me, it was uh, it's the Shawnee Boys soccer team. Okay. They, had, they are oh, making their goodness. third trip yeah, right. to, right. to state games in five years. They have done it with a whole new group of kids. It's not like this is you know the same group that played and same group that played. There's still a, a smattering of kids from when they won that state title in, in 2022, but for the most part, they're doing it with a whole new lineup. This is a really fundamentally good team. They are coached extremely well. Depending on when you're listening to this, um, you'll know whether or not they're playing for a state title <laughs> right. on Sunday or not because here and as far as when we're recording this, they get underway in about a half hour for a, a spot in the state championship. But the – the, the run that they have been on has been a lot of fun to watch. I, I have some personal connections with that team, so I've been able to watch it a lot closer. Um, you know, Michael's actually a really good friend with uh, with the goalkeeper. Um, it, it, you get a different uh, vantage point when you're kind of tied in like that, and it's been it's been something to watch. And so that that has been a, a great thing to see happening. This tournament run of theirs has been really good. They defeated the number one team in the state in that regional final to earn a state semifinal trip. Uh, it's been a great season. Hope that it continues. Hopefully, you know, we get to talk about them playing on a Sunday afternoon for a state title. But even if they don't, it's been it's been an absolutely fantastic uh, a ride. And because I don't want Miles to feel you know, out of place, right, right. right? I don't want him to feel like the odd duckling with he, you know, oh, has more. We only have duckling, one. Yeah. You know, I, so my honorable mention is, is actually Fort Recovery. And I understand that that game didn't go well and you wouldn't be like, oh, that game was the best yeah, game I've ever seen. And blah, nothing, you're right. Yeah. Like, like, but they stepped up. Absolutely. There are three do. teams that said, absolutely not. We're not going to go and play that game. I think the Browns were one of those teams. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, they, it's not like they didn't like. Well, we don't really know. Like they'd already played Marion local. No, they, they already exactly knew what, what was getting. going yeah. to to happen. They knew what they were getting themselves into, and they didn't even think about it. That that is that MAC toughness. That's okay. why that that is the toughest conference in any division in the entire state, hands down. Uh, a big shout out to Fort Recovery. That was great to see them step up in that spot, play that game, regardless of what the outcome was. Let's go to the rookie here. We got look. We got a, we got a nickname him. I'm gonna go Michael Red Zone Garlic. Throw me the ball. Coach, right? I'm 6'4. Throw me the ball. I like it. 
Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Michael, what's the best thing you saw this week? Uh, I'd have to go with that St. Mary's touchdown to win the game. The last play the of the last game? The last play of the game, fourth and yeah. 20. That kid's never caught a pass in his varsity career. How tough was St. Was... Mary's this year you guys played him? Oh, my God. It was, <laughs> it was ground and pound the whole time. It was, it was a lot. Were you, were you more surprised that they won or that they threw a ball forward? <laughs> well, see, the crazy part was they threw their first passing touchdown of the season against us. Oh. That was a that was a fun one to watch. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that, you know, it, it's 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 almost like the it's almost like a cruel joke for St. Mary's. Like if they're trying to break your back, yeah. right? And they're like, you know, we're we're doing this, we're doing this, and they're like, we need that dagger, right? We need to put you away. They're like, oh yeah, watch this now. Now that all eleven guys are in a box <laughs> trying to come across and right. stop us, eh, we'll just throw it over the top for the touchdown. Even sitting in the stands watching that game against Shawnee, and I saw it, and I went, oof. Here yeah, all right. Yeah. That's oh, they, they did right. in the that, second quarter. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't even like it was a fourth quarter. It was a second quarter. How, how frustrating is that though? When you're playing defense and you know exactly what they're going to run, and you guys try to stop it, and they're still getting six, seven yards. I mean, it's it's a challenge, but you know you got to do what you got to do. Whatever happens is going to happen, right? Well, Michael, we got a lot of questions for you, so uh, stick around. We got all oh, kinds of questions for I'm you. Here. Guys, I got to uh, do the game between Ada and Lipsick, a kind of a revenge game. They had played the week before. Ada won that game by three. Uh, Lipsick wins this one running away in the second half. Ada was ahead at halftime, but my most impressive thing was the freshman quarterback yeah. from Lipsick, Mark Kirkendall. Again, I get enamored over these kids. You know, you. We went, no, yeah, no, you we, don't. We went, what? <laughs> this is breaking news, folks. Nate, Nobody Nate, has Nate, figured we've got this four out. four years to hear about this now. <laughs> yeah, right? that's, yeah. yeah. That's I'm going to fawn all over the place. Yeah. I'm going to Lipsick. I'm telling you. So, Tavian St. Clair was my first guy, my first crush. Well, how did you call that one? Yeah. That's amazing. No one else saw yeah. that one. Yeah. 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 Then I went Brogan Steffi, <laughs> who's really good. This kid is he's electric. He's a freshman and he has a big time arm. He has no nerves. He stood in the pocket. He can run the ball. He makes every throw. He's really he's really smart. His dad's the coach. Lipsick's gonna be fantastic for the next three or four years. How big is he? He's about six one. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's uh, he's a good sized kid and he has command of that offense and they're 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 pretty good. Which is I mean, you get a f you got a kid who's a freshman who's gonna be that good. And I haven't seen him, so we just have to take your word for it. Yeah. And and I believe you. And so I think you don't, you don't. Really good. But you're, you're talking about a, a BBC that's going to be a new look conference mm-hmm. next year with Liberty Benton on its way out. So there's going to be room up top for some jostling. Lipstick oh, had yeah. a good year. They were near the top all season long. You had Aiden now in that conference coming off of a good season. But when your starting quarterback is a freshman, yep. he's already having success, and you have a chance to ride that wave for the next three years – People better watch out. Lipstick's going to be something to do. Not deal only with. that, Nate, but your starting quarterback and your head coach are with each other Absolutely. 24 7. The difference that makes is. It's a blessing and a curse. It is a blessing and a curse. It, it can be, but Joel Kirkendall is a fantastic. Well, you know, coach. it seemed to work out just fine over in Walpock. Yeah, so. Still working yeah, out. Okay. Okay. Until he throws that first pick. He's <laughs> yeah, not right. always going to throw a pick. Because he doesn't want to have to walk home. That's right. <laughs> so, what's going to happen next year at Lipstick when they first day of practice, right? They're going to say, who wants to play running back? Nobody's going to be there because they're all going to want to be receivers, oh, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Like We're going to throw a lot of our running back screen passes, maybe? All right. Well, before we preview our games of the week, let's talk to Michael a little bit here. And Michael, uh, your senior year, new coaching staff, kind of sum up the whole season. I know you guys were a little disappointed in, in some of the uh, wins and losses, but you guys started off great, and uh, you ended spectacular your senior year. You couldn't have been more happy, right? Oh, I couldn't have asked for anything else to end the season, but – you know, the new coaching staff was different. It was it was a different aspect than what I'm used to, but sure. I, lo- I love the Wiremans. They're great guys. They've <laughs> they did a great job taking over and I have I have no doubt that within the next two, three years, Shawnee's gonna be a good football program again. Now your last high school football game, your best game that you've ever played, right? Yeah. yeah. How many catches did you have? Four. Four catches for like 136? 174. 174. Oh, 174. <laughs> Don't cheat the guy, man. Did you see how quick that was? Too? Oh, I knew. I knew. He's got a tattoo already. <laughs> but the cool thing was your dad got to call that game. How, how special was that for you? Well, that, that means a lot. You know, he's, he's called a lot of my games. And unfortunately, none of them were touchdowns until that last one. And watching the, watching the game back on YouTube and hearing his excitement when I got that first one. It was it was really cool to hear. Would you rather have him in the stands or, or calling the game? Because if he's not in the stands and he's calling the game, you can't really hear him during the game, can you? Yeah, there, I mean, there's sometimes I look up at him. He's giving me dirty looks or <laughs> trying, to, trying to tell me what to do from up there. And now listen, and all, but it's not. Bec- it's because why? 
It's, it's because what are the, what's the two things that I tell you you can control in life? My attitude and my effort. I, I've been, I preach it to all of my kids. There's only two things in this life that you can control, and that's your attitude and your effort. Everything else will take care of itself. And no matter how bad you're going or how good you're going, if you concern yourself with those two things, everything will work itself out. I feel like we're sitting in front of a fire. I know. It, right? Wait, right. Right. Well, you, usually, you, usually when he's looking up at me and he's getting them looks, yeah. it's because that attitude has gone down a little bit. Or I've seen that effort start to dip, and I'm, it's like, hey, get, let's go. Come on now. Yeah. Off the bench, on the sidelines let's get back into this danny this reminds me of saturday when we were uh, doing the, the radio show at the sertoma club's pancake breakfast right uh, he was challenged if he Cheesy could eat promo, by the if way. he could eat <laughs> on out of bounds um if, <laughs> with every saturday <laughs> nine to noon uh, um but when he was challenged on pancakes like he, he had that that little bit of doubt in his eye but you could see the attitude and the effort he dug deep and he got nine pancakes down that big old belly of his that was, it was impressive that yeah. was not a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't feel like it until i got to about eight and then i was like oh this, this is a little bit harder than i thought it was to be so, so michael uh your dad tells me you got a college visit coming up and you've looked at some other schools you want to play college ball at the next level that's awesome where are you looking at what are you interested in what are you going to majoring uh so the next two weeks so this week i'm going to defines college for a game day oh, visit nice. yeah. and then next week i'm going to mount st joseph university oh that's nice yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm looking to major in business and sports management you want to play wide receiver at the next level i mean yeah you, you got the build you're six four you're athletic right yeah that's the yeah. plan <laughs> <laughs> now some schools will look at you and say he's six four he could probably put on weight what if they what if they want to move you to tight end how do you feel that I wouldn't be mad about it, but I might have to grow up a little bit. I'm a little scared to block sometimes. <laughs> ah, he's honest, isn't he? Scared to block. Well, right. It's uh, it's been it's been the the part of his game we've talked about the most is the blocking. But you know, I, I gotta give him a lot of credit. He stepped up this year too, um, and he added long snapping. And so nice. he he was the Makes long snapper valuable. for Shawnee this year. Did uh, punts and field goals, and you know that's been a challenge he's taken on. So he's hoping that maybe you know he we, we were talking about some stuff, and he said, you know, listen, as a freshman, I may not you know get a whole lot of playing time through the field, but I bet you I can make the traveling team as a backup long snapper, and you know exactly. whatever you can do to help help the team, he's willing to do. As a former long snapper, I gotta ask, I, like, I hated it because it's so much pressure, right? Every single yeah. snap, it, nobody cares if it's a good one; it's the bad one. Everybody says, "Who's the long snap?" Snapper, right? <laughs> yeah. Did you like that pressure? I, I enjoy the pressure. I feel like pressure makes me play better. But it's not even the snapping I like. It's running down the field and hitting somebody. And against, but he won't block. I won't block. But yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you this, Nate, and uh, I've talked to other parents about this before. I, I had more joy watching my kids play sports than I ever had playing sports. And I played every sport, but I had more joy. Was that? Oh, yeah, for there? sure. I mean, you know, I, I played – all grown up I've been coaching for over 20 years and the greatest joy that I've had is watching my kids succeed and I thought before it was you know coaching because when as you guys know as coaches you, they kind of become your kids I mean no, our families had some unique experiences where some of them have become our kids almost and um you know but watching watching him play and watching him you know grow up on the field and um you know I mean I uh, he he, not gonna be surprised. I'm not. I don't consider myself overly sentimental, um, but you know, I, I, it it hit different. Oh, it hit yes. different on that Friday night when yeah. it when it was over yeah, and realizing, one. you know, this is the last decade plus of watching him run around and play and do this has come to an end. And you know, maybe we get a chance to see it, you know, at the next level. But it will just never be the same as it's been. No, I said on the way in here, I said, "Your dad done you're coming in. Any chance we make the old man cry?" And he said, "I hope so." <laughs> <laughs> said he gets, what are you doing? <laughs> I've seen him cry twice. Yeah, that's about it. Okay. Well, right. Michael, we appreciate you coming in, and uh, we're going to go through this matchup, and uh, we'll get your thoughts. And, uh, yeah, let's, let's let go, guys. So uh, the WSN uh, Week 2 of the Ohio High School playoff schedule. We start out, Lima Central Catholic goes to Columbus Grove. Randy Roberts and you, Miles Holiday. LCC comes in at 8-3. and three. Grove, 11-0. and 0. They just played two weeks ago. What's your thoughts? Yeah, I'm excited to, to be on this one with Randy Roberts. Yeah. It's the second time we get to broadcast with this one. 28-20, and this was really a game that could have gone either way. If you watched it, you saw the onside kick that apparently was recovered by LCC, but then it wasn't, yeah. and I think that was a huge point in that football game. Now, I do like the fact that Coach Schaefer, when he was talked about this game this week, he said, we did not win the battle of physicality the first time we played them. That's a bad sign for LCC, sign, right? Yeah. When they think they, they didn't win the battle of physicality, that means Columbus Grove is going to have a challenging week of practice. And as we know, there are dudes everywhere for Columbus Grove, and especially 
Trent Barraza, right? But don't forget his brother. Did you see what his brother did last week? Yeah. Another interception. Gavin Barraza, it's going to be a Barraza barrage. This is going to be a fun ta- fantastic game. Stars everywhere. Matthew Quatman looks healthy, Nate. Yep, he's um, getting there. He's just a stud. Dom McKee on the offensive line for mm-hmm. LCC. Guys, he's going to play big-time college football, 6'5", 240 pounds as a sophomore. I was real impressed with LCC against Pandora Gilboa last week. I'm really looking forward to this one. Nate, these guys played two weeks ago. They've got film. Who's got the advantage? Well, so, you know, I said this. Um, oh, well, curveball I threw at him. See that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, so I saw, so I, we, you know, I've been thinking about this a lot this week, and I, and I think I said this maybe on air with, with uh, earlier this week when we yeah. talked about these matchups. And I, I think the biggest downfall that LCC has is that they showed Columbus Grove there a threat. Yeah. Right? If that game wasn't close, That's a great I, point. I think That's a great LCC point. would have a little bit better chance coming in. But when you got a team the caliber of Columbus Grove and they don't think that they played their best game against you and you showed them that, hey, if you aren't ready, we can beat you, that is bad news for LCC. Now, what I'll say, though, too, on the other side of that, is this is there's so much more to this, and we talked about this during the regular season matchup. There's so much more to this game than just two really good football teams, right? You have a lot of B storylines going on mm. with you know Coach Palti and his history with Columbus Grove and the relationship he has with the coaching staff and vice versa, and, and there's all this, and you know there's all this extra stuff going into it, and this is a rivalry renewed from back in the day with the NWC, and LCC never lost those matchups, and th- there's just so much other stuff going on. You talked about the the onside kick that wasn't. Right. I, I'm still confused on that rule because LCC definitely recovered it. They but, did. but I don't. I I assume that what had happened was is in high school it has to touch the ground first, and since that never touched the ground, Our that's replay what it showed was. That it did though. That's what was crazy. Yeah. About so it. I I, I it's just I don't know. And so there's all these there's all these other things in already a game that's rich in rivalry. You know, I do think that two weeks, having an additional two weeks to recover for Matthew Quatman is huge. Matthew Quatman is one of the best players in this entire area. You know, he was compromised in that Bluffton game. He was still compromised in that first matchup with Grove. He's getting back and getting healthy. Uh, LCC going to miss Mylon Cowan a little bit, but they can move some guys around. Over 100 yards receiving last time. You know, but – you know, maybe you know Matthew gets to fill that role, but you can move him all over the place. Receiver, running back, hit him on jet motions. You know, Michael Quatman is another weapon that they have that they can utilize more in offense. They have things all over the place. It's going to come down, in my opinion, to to coaching. And when you talk about two teams and coaching, that can you know you're like okay, that could be good. But these are two really good coaches yeah, who know awesome each other really well yeah. and know how to make adjustments on the fly. This one is really intriguing because it's really hard for me to get a lean either way, honestly. Can I build off of Nate's yeah. point on the coaching? Uh, great points, right? Sometimes, though, as coaches, we can get a little impatient. I think whatever staff can hold off on being impatient is going to win this football game. Give, give you an example. Grove ran a fake punt against LCC two weeks ago, right? It blew up in their face. It allowed LCC to get back in the football game. This past week, Pandora, Gilboa, LCC up by two scores, fourth and three on their own 40. They go for it, get stopped, allowed Pandora Gilboa to get in that football game. So I think both those coaches can be a little bit impatient sometime, let the game come to you. I think that whatever staff does that, it's going to be okay. Yeah, Michael, you guys played these guys 12 weeks ago, and we all and everybody in the community was looking at that game, and it was a big win for you guys. Didn't realize how big a win it was because this is a good LCC team. Do they have a shot against Grove? I think they do have a shot. If if Matthew plays the way he's able to play, I think LCC has a real chance. But at the same time, you you got you got to stop Trent Barraza. Yeah. He's, he's good luck. He's really good. <laughs> yeah, he's really. So good. you think if LCC runs the ball effectively, keeps him off the field, they they, they can win this game. Oh, look, this is, you said it, Scott Palti. There's a lot of roots here in this game. Oh yeah, I mean it's all over the place, and yeah, I mean I think Michael's right on with it. Like, you know, being able to to run effectively with Matthew and being able to control that, and even if he's not the feature back because they need him to do other things, if he is enough of a distraction to open things up other places for that offense, and they can uh, drain that clock, have long possessions. The best way to beat Columbus Grove is to keep the ball out of Barraza's hands. Well, how do you do that? Well, it's he, he, he has done. to. He has there's to stay. So he has to stay on the sidelines, right? You know, I mean, and 
you know, you talk about his uh, Brazos brother on defense. You know, LCC no slouch on defense either. It, it's really fun because to me, it's really fun is you have the Brazos brothers on one side. One is a stud on offense. One's a stud on defense. On the LCC side, you have the Quabbin right, brothers, right? right? Yeah. One is a stud on offense. One is a stud on you know Michael Quabbin tied. Bra- uh, Gavin Braza in the for interceptions. For interceptions. Right. I mean, he was right there with him. So, the, you know, there's also, like I said, there's A, B, C, D storylines going on in this game. I mean, it's intriguing all well, over how, the place. How about this one? Caden Falky against Trent Barraza, one of the best linebackers yeah. in the area. That, that's a great battle in the box. Look, if I'm Andy Coles, the defensive coordinator for Columbus Grove, last week LCC dominated A and B gap by running quarterback lead, right? You load up A and B gap. Then let your seven defenders after that worry about stopping Quatman on the outside. I think that's how you slow down a very impressive LCC offense. Game two, Ottawa Glandorf goes to Shelby. You, Nate Garlock, and Darren Gilbert will be on the call for that one. We take a look at both these teams. Ottawa Glandorf comes in at seven and five. Shelby eleven and zero. This Shelby offense is explosive. They. Three times this year, they've went 50 or more. Four times they've went 40 or more. They're the league champions. They're stacked. It's a big test for Ken Schreiner and the Titans. Yeah, I mean, you know, I. Um, I haven't got a chance to sit in a press box with Gilly all oh, year long, luck, yeah. so I'm, I'm, super, I'm, for su- everyone. I'm super excited <laughs> about don't, that. Don't drive together. <laughs> <laughs> super happy about that one. You know, if, if it's a high press box, they can just kind of pick me up and put me yes, up there. Will, it's great. Yeah. Um, you know, but I, I, to me, this is a little bit of a deceiving matchup. You look at a 7-5 and five record from the Titans, an undefeated Shelby team. Shelby team, as you mentioned, dominant all over the place. Ottawa Glendorf, to me, though, was really flown under the radar all season long. Not a lot of expectations coming into this year only had a one win uh, season last year not a lot of people thinking they're going to make a lot of noise but that defense from Ottawa Glandorf is legit and they are they are good and they can run the football with Grant Evers Peyton Kuhlman is dangerous enough to keep you honest when he drops back to throw the ball they they play really good football now to me it's the consistency that defense will keep them in games can the offense do enough well Shelby's defense is really really good right, too right. Know, yeah. but I'll tell you what the Elida put some stuff on film last week that I think yeah. Ottawa Glendorf is going to be studying really, really carefully. The Bulldogs were in that game for a long stretch of that before Shelby finally just kind of overwhelmed them. But if that Ottawa Glendorf defense can come in, the same OG defense that you know went at, got after a St. Mary's team and shut down a, their run game and all these other things that they've had success doing this year shows up. They're going to give Shelby a game for sure. Michael, let me ask you, what makes that OG defense so special? They're so disciplined. They they don't get a lot of penalties. Their corners are very sound. Their D linemen, linebackers don't miss tackles. They just they fly 11 hats to the ball every time. What we, do we need you for? Listen to I this. Mean, what do we listen, need you for? Where do you think I get all my information, guys? I'm just like, hey, <laughs> tell me everything you know. Hey, it's like he's in the red zone all the time. <laughs> oh, oh. My God. Yeah. You, got, you, you played these guys last year. They were 1-9. and nine. They weren't very good. What's the difference this year in this team? Yeah. They, they're so they're so physical compared to last year. It was yeah. crazy. How physical were they? Last oh, they were year? real physical last year. <laughs> how, how physical were they? Man, son? Papa Ribs had a place physical. <laughs> oh, and I don't mean disrespect when I say they weren't very good. They just one and nine last yeah. year, and they really amped it up this year at seven oh, yeah. five. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. So, the, in my estimation, the only way OG wins this one, right, is this is one of those ugly, muddy games, yeah. right, where it's barely twenty points, and they find that last What's touchdown. Well, I just mean like it's an ugly game, right? They're going to mud it up, yeah. They got to survive the first quarter because if Shelby can put a lot of points up early, I don't see OG staying with them, right? Um, So if Shelby knocks them out early, that's the way Shelby wins. But if this gets to be midway through the third quarter and this is a football game, that's when OG starts to get that belief and they're running the football. Don't forget, Grant Evers is as good as anybody at carrying the football. It's a physical football team. And then if Shelby is in a football game, Game late into the third, fourth quarter, there's that finally that self doubt. But that's a big ask because only uh, only two times this year has anyone scored more than twice against Shelby. Yeah, I'm going to say this about there, there there are there are a few teams in our area that regardless of the season, when postseason rolls around, their kids never flinch. You got a few teams in the MAC like that and Ottawa Glendorf in every sport. Mm. Postseason comes around. It doesn't matter. Those kids never flinch. They are so focused. And he's right. When they talk about discipline, that's the key to winning a lot of games. Yeah. And even if you're not as talented as the other team across the field, discipline really goes a long way. Yeah, and you know, you, you talk about about – the the history and you know Ottawa Glendorf and you know when they get to the postseason on Friday night they're going to have a second round football playoff game going on 
where they're going to be playing oh, at Shelby. Yeah, yeah. Well, in another part of the state, yep. their girls' soccer team is going to be playing for a state championship. And then another part of the state, their volleyball team is also going to be playing for a state championship. Pretty good, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> all on Friday, the yeah. Ottawa Glandorf community will be absolutely empty as they will be all over the state trying to follow their kids play in, in state tournaments. And we haven't even got to basketball season yet. Right. And that hasn't even started yet. And this is supposed to be a down year for OG. I mean, come on. <laughs> John Kidd. <laughs> <laughs> game three, guys. Uh, big time Mac game. St. Henry goes to Minster. Dave Bone and Jack McGuire are on the call. Guys, look, these two teams played a couple weeks ago. Uh, St. Henry comes in at seven and four. Minster nine and two. I said this that St. Henry runs the ball really, really effective if they can keep Minster off the field. But that's a big, well, big. Well, Danny, I gotta ask you, who, who yeah. is the quarterback for Minster? Brogan Steffi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's you, really you, good. You cannot say it in that creepy way. Right? Right? Like, you can just say it's yeah. oh, it's Brogan Steffi. I have can you heard like, him? Yes. You don't so have Brogan Steffi. You don't have yeah. to get it's all weird same, about it. It's the same way he asked uh, Michael to come on the show. <laughs> it's not. And, and, and you saw what happened. Michael's like, yeah, sure. I'll, I never met. You. I don't know sure, if you're a picture guy. of you, but you say you're Danny Holbrook. I believe you. <laughs> That's the last episode of Three Wise Men. <laughs> so uh, this is a Minster team, Brogan Steffi, player of the year in the MAC on offense, right? He is everything Danny says he is. He's absolutely, absolutely. fantastic, right? Now, I will say this, though. Caution. Caution if you're Minster, because you blew out Manchester 75-14 to 14 oh, last week, right? Some you, would call that a not a blowout. <laughs> right. Do you know how tough it is to refocus guys after a huge win like that? Yeah. Even though it's St. Henry and you only you know lost or beat St. Henry twelve to seven, you know back in September, they're gonna feel really good about themselves. This is a St. Henry team, though. When you talk about the playoffs, things travel. What travels? Defense, physicality, and run game. Yep. And if Minster comes out and thinking, hey, <laughs> seventy five to fourteen last week, we're, we beat these guys already. Watch out. This St. Henry team, they could chew you up. Yeah, but I think what you just said is the reason why I think that Minster will be okay. It's because they only beat St. Henry 12-7. to 7. Mm -hmm. I, I would be more concerned if it had been like a high-scoring right, game. Yeah, LCC Grove yeah, theory, but, saying, yeah. but instead... Minster knows that they're in for a fight. They know that St. Henry has things on tape to slow them down. They know they're going to have to do better at execution, do some new things, change some stuff up a little bit. So I don't think that the refocus after a blowout will be as difficult because of how close that first game was. Mm. Yeah. Danny, uh, when do you send a text message to Brogan Steffi wishing him luck? Is it... Is it early in the day on Friday, or, or is it right before kickoff? I don't kickoff? text him. I call him. <laughs> <laughs> he, and actually, he doesn't call him. Yeah. He goes super aggressive. He FaceTimes him. <laughs> now, Michael, you didn't play either of these teams this year, but you look, you watch the Mac from afar. You're a yeah. WBL guy. Pretty good league, isn't it? Oh, it's a great league. <laughs> they're, they're real tough. <laughs> All right, guys. Game four. I'll be on the call with Garn. Good, Great, great insight. <laughs> great drop in. Yeah, great, great yeah. insight. Oh, yeah. the, the Mac is tough. <laughs> I like football. St. <laughs> Henry's fun. Uh, I was supposed to be on that game. That's why you had that look when I gave those announcers. Uh, I got all turned yeah, up. Yeah, I got yeah. moved to the uh, Wilmington and Wapakoneta game. Myself and Dar never got on the call. Uh, Wilmington comes into this game 7-4. and Wapakoneta 11-0. Still no interceptions thrown by Caleb Moyer. 21 touchdown passes. Do it this week. He is phenomenal. I'm telling you, him and his dad, what a combination. This Wapakoneta team, loaded. This is an impressive Wilmington team, though. Started sure. three and four, right? They're averaging 44 points a game in their last four games that they have won. And they, they kind of got revenge against Batavia with a, a big win. They lost. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, Wapakoneta is not Batavia. Uh, this no. is going to be no problem for Wapakoneta. Look, I really think this is a game that Grant Hauser, you know, they love to use him blocking. They love to use him as a defensive uh, lineman. He's fantastic. I think this is a game that they start using that flat tight end screen that they like to run, and I think he's going to have Grand a big Alfred, game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's three things I expect when I go to Wapakoneta. A really nice press box, you get fed really well, and a running clock. I love going to Wapakoneta. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, you know, Wilmington has very impressive numbers. I mean, they do, but I have a lot of questions about the conference and the schedule that I they agree. play. I, th I think there's sure. a lot of inflation in those numbers as far as based off of, of who they have played. You know, Walpock battle-tested. We know what they have gone through with the grind of, of that Western Buckeye League. And, you know, quite frankly, Caleb Moyer, if there's a better quarterback in, in this state right now, maybe it's Tavion St. Clair. 
that's maybe about it, right? But he's home. And and he's not playing anymore. Yep. Caleb Moyer, if he doesn't get a lot of attention, he doesn't get a lot of pub, he isn't the flashiest quarterback. His numbers really aren't even he wasn't even the top top passer in the league because of, you know, the type of offense that Kenton runs. Um, it doesn't help that, you know, the Kenton quarterback threw for 500 yards in, in week 10 um, in a shootout against Shawnee, that, right? Yeah. But we're not talking about that right now. But, um, but, but a lot of it has to do with the, the game, right? Like right. the, the Wapak gets up early. Caleb doesn't have to do anything. He is so impressive. You, if you watch this kid, you will walk away being like, yep, that is the best quarterback or at least one of in the entire state. And to me, it all comes down to one thing. You know, and Danny, I don't know if you remember this or not, but last summer when we before Tavion really started, you know, being the, off, yeah. who he was, right? We had a chance to talk to him on, mm-hmm. on the radio and interview him. Great kid. But leading up to that, there had been a 77 with – Walpole Ryan or Montgomery. with um, Ryan with Finley, Finley and, yeah. and Bell Fountain, yeah. And watching those highlights to get ready for that interview and stuff, you could tell the difference in those two. And to me, it came down to one thing, and that was field vision. When you watch Tavion St. Clair, he would move, and you would see him make his reads and then go back to whatever the best read was. That is not something that high school quarterbacks do. High school quarterbacks take the snap, they find the guy that the play I'm was called it. for, <laughs> and then they throw it or they get tackled. Yeah, right? Like, like that's yeah. how this goes. Caleb Moyer, you can watch him take his reads in the game. I had that game last week against Franklin, and you could you could see him making his reads. He went through his progressions. He worked through them. He found the best one, and if he needed to come back, he would, or as soon as he saw the best one, he let it go. These aren't lob passes he's making. He's not making five-yard passes that guys are breaking. He's throwing these balls on a rope, mm-hmm. leading his receivers. They never have to break stride. Right. They never have to reach behind him. Always they never got to go low. Yep. And that's why they're so successful. I mean, Caleb Moyer is the real deal. And if as long as that line continues to give him time, that offense can play with, I think, any team in Division Three. Always making winning plays, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wilmington comes into this contest, guys, averaging 31 points a game. It's not happening Friday night. No, no, no not at all. Wapak's defense gives up uh, 13 points a game. Uh, Wilmington rushes for only 130 yards a game. If you can't rush the ball more than that against this Wapak and the team, you can tell us, Michael, their depth is unbelievable. They, their second teamers are just, just loaded, right? Yeah, this, I mean, their second teamers are – right there with the first team. It's like, <laughs> you can't tell the difference sometimes. It's yeah. crazy. What, well, and when you had them, right, I mean, you had, you know, Shawnee played them in that bad weather week, right, yeah, where right, that right, where we right. had the rain only one we side, had all year, yeah, yeah, rain sideways, wind. You're not going to throw the ball in those games. The conditions won't allow it. It's miserable. Hmm. It, what Caleb Moyer do, threw them on a rope, led guys open. I mean, it was Threw incredible. a 50-yard dart, dart to Caden Page. Yeah. yeah. If I remember, he was like 16 of 19 that day. Yeah, it was, in, it it was, was incredible. Impressive. Guys, uh, so we're going to be finished with round two of the state playoffs, which is unbelievable. Last week's games in round one, did anything surprise you guys? I, I was kind of surprised that uh, that vaunted uh, Lima senior offense. Yeah, yeah. It really got stymied, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah especially the last two weeks uh, at start uh, got limited, and then last week – didn't even score a point, which is absolutely insane to me. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, cause I obviously I asked around being in the halls and stuff. Like, you know, I wasn't at the game because I was at Walpark. I was like, man, what happened? Like, I, I thought that that was going to be a tough matchup for them. Vandalia Butler, what they do well is the is what we found to be the yeah, thing that I'm seeing a struggle maybe. with, yeah. and that was stopping that run. But to not score, I was, I was, what's going on? Well, it turns out they had a lot of opportunities. They just made a lot of mistakes that they didn't make. You, you guys were running wide open, make a catch, fumble the ball, mm. you know, going into the end zone, things like that. Things that should have been touchdowns that would have been touchdowns. It was just a night where things just went all wrong for the Spartans. Yeah, my big surprise last week, and it wasn't a surprise because we had talked about it a lot, and I know we joked and kidded about the St. John's Upper Side of Valley game. St. John's goes down in the fourth quarter, twenty-two to eight. They come back and win that yeah. game, guys. What what a comeback! They got their quarterback back, and that's a good USV team. That was a nine and one team. They won the NWCC, and uh, it was on their field. So that's what surprised me. Felt I, bad for our guys Mason and Maddox, but yeah. uh, USV acquitted yeah. themselves really well this year. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why you were surprised though. Because you, you called me, it. Yeah. Me being constantly right, and I wasn't yeah. calling it. I just. 
said, hey, you know, there's, there's, if you look yeah. at the analytics here. In the fourth quarter, this guy texts all of us <laughs> and says, did. sorry, I was wrong. And then yeah. about 15 yeah. minutes later, he's like, I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> he's, he's always right. Always right. <laughs> ah. is, is the first round broken, guys? And I don't how think do so. we fix it? No, I don't. I don't you, you can't say it's broken when you had. Oh, 50, I was going to say it's broken. You, but it, it's not, because I've had this conversation with a lot of people, and a lot of it stem, stemmed from the conversations with this, with Lachlan opting out to not want to play yes, Marion yes, local. Yeah. People are like, see, this is why we can't have an expanded playoffs. Well, for every Lachlan, there's Adelphi St. John's. And to, and to yeah. me, that's offsetting penalties. <laughs> Replay the down. <laughs> Where's Jim at? Because, What's going on? Beca- because how can you say that an expanded playoff doesn't work and teams who don't deserve to be in are getting games when you have – 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, and 10, and 9 seeds all over the second round. That means the guys who wouldn't have made it an expansion beat guys who did, and they're still alive. To me, that shows that, yes, we may not be happy with all of them. There's a lot of lopsided victories, but guess what? Look at the regular season. Yeah. There's a ton of lopsided victories in conference play anyway. Well, that should happen in the regular season. When you get to the playoffs, though, these are supposed to be the elites of the elite, right? There's, you shouldn't have these blowouts in the first round. And so, so for every 2-15 and 15 that you said, Delphi St. John's upsetting USV, mm-hmm. you also get the 75-14 to first round games, right. right? So why can't we figure out a system where your top four seeds maybe are rewarded and get that by week, to get that week off, and then you play the games into the second round where those are more competitive matchups. I, I just think the one versus 16 matchup every single year is just a joke. I mean, we, we know North Baltimore had absolutely no chance last yeah. week a, yeah. a, against Columbus Grove. So why play those games? So I, I'm with you because I got to be honest, my my – I was ready to argue with you because I really thought you were going to come at me with we, we shouldn't be doing expanded playoffs, 16 teams no, I'm, is too I'm many. Okay with that. I was all ready to argue that feat based off. Now, what you're saying does make a lot of sense, though. You give the top four a bite. Now, at a certain point, we can't keep extending football season. So Why we got, not? Let's we, make it your round. Wait, what's, what's, I'm what's, with what's it. About, we, you, you're going <laughs> to have to build domes. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to figure that out. But – you know, you would have more competitive games because, but the other side of that too is, even under the old system, one versus eights were blowouts all the time too. You you, you knew that a one was going to absolutely rack an eight, and you'd have a fifty-six to nothing game. That's the whole reason they yeah. went to running clocks in the playoffs way before expansion. Yeah, and it was for a reason. But but everybody knows, right? You're the sixteen seed, and and I've coached teams that just got into the playoffs, and you're spending the whole week long trying to get some belief because the kids they're not dumb, are they, Michael? They know when they watch film what, what's what's in front of them, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're not stupid. Yeah. They, they know when the team's good. Do you guys think that when they went to seven divisions from four divisions, that uh, kind of put a flux into this as far as the blowouts and things like that? As far as more blowouts because yeah. of it? Yeah. Now, Nate, what do you think? I mean, I, no. I mean, I think you were going to have, no matter whether you, we, we could go to one division, you're going to have a bunch of blowouts. I mean, yeah. blowouts is just a part of the game. The top versus bottom in any division, in any makeup, you you're going to be really hard pressed to find it where it's competitive all the way through. You're going to have these mismatches. And listen, Marion Local is going to go to a state final this year and probably win by 50, right? Like, yes, I mean, as, at, a, at a certain point, it, it, it's just a part of it. And it's up to coaches. And, you know, you can spend your week banging your head against the wall going, hey, guys, no believe. Or some coaches are going to spend the week going, hey, let's have some fun this yeah. week. It just depends on how you want to run your program. And we see upsets. Yeah, we always bang on schools that, uh, you know, like a Marion local who are graduating 35 kids a year. And we're like, oh, how can they do this? How can they do this? Look what they're doing. Other schools, you know, they, they say, well, we don't have enough kids. Well, Marion Local says, you know, every boy's going to play football. You well, know? Two, two thoughts that I've always thought that they should do, right? Before you get placed in, in the playoffs, they should have to come out and look at your kids and say, oh, no, no. You, you, <laughs> you guys really belong in this region I, I over here, right? No, I don't right. think so. I, don't right. think right. I, think, I think they should. And, or um, how close are you to a Walmart? If your school is so far away from a Walmart, you don't yeah. get to play against a school that is five miles from a Walmart. Walmart. <laughs> you know there's a Walmart in every county in Ohio. There's 80 of them. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, let's talk about the Buckeyes. Big win over Penn State. The good, the bad, the Buckeye. They go into Happy Valley. They take out the Nittany Lions, and Will Howard leads them to victory, Nate. Look yeah. how excited he is. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> 20 and a half points, fellas. 
20 and a half points. It's good defense. Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, 20 and a half. How does Vegas know that? You had a financial interest in I had a financial game. interest yeah. at Ohio State. 20 and a half points. Fumble Will Howard fumbles it into the end zone. Yeah. They get they score 14 points in the first quarter. They get two field goals the rest of the game. <laughs> the bad defense of struggle. is the, the offensive inability to finish games. No, so for me, the, the, the good for me was that, that run defense. The run defense from Ohio State showed up. They, they kept that uh, really, really good rushing offense of Penn State. They're two main they guys. Did, yeah. They only had 42 yards. They, they, did a, they did a fantastic job. I was very, very uh, happy to see that. You saw the, the line really, um, uh, really flex their muscle there at the end of the game when they get those three stops right in the shadow of the end zone to keep Penn State out from tying that one up. So that, that was great. Um, the bad... Will Howard and his throws. I, I know that it was kind of been Pick a, six bothered you? Yeah, a little really? bit, a little bit, right? <laughs> no. You know, and the one thing that they said, you know, Will Howard even had said coming in, he can't throw he can't throw interceptions in big spots, right? And I we talked right, about this on right. Saturday. How about fumbling we're, in we're, big spots? Right, but I said, you know, it, all the attention gets to be throwing an interception late in the fourth quarter to, to you yeah. know, uh, cost your team the game. Well, you know, sometimes those interceptions in the first quarter, are also the thing that you can point back to and say, that's actually what did it. If you wouldn't have thrown that, we wouldn't have found ourselves in this position in the fourth quarter, right? <laughs> and you're right, and we did, and Penn State's a good team. It was a top-five matchup. All of these things are, are true. But we're starting to see a pattern here with Will Howard and protecting the football. What is the one thing that you two have been telling me all year about Will Howard and the only thing that we needed him to do? Don't bet the over. <laughs> <laughs> just don't. Just, just play because you don't have to win the game. Just, he, yeah. he needed to be a game manager, yeah, right? right? We didn't right. need him to come in and be a superstar. We didn't need him to be the reason we won games. We needed him to be the reason we didn't lose games, right? That's what I've been yeah. told about Will Howard. And so, listen, he's won, he's, he's, we've lost one game. Yeah. It was to the number one team in the country by one point on their own field. I understand all the talking points we've been saying. My fear, though, is we're overlooking these turnovers. Who, who, what and it's going to hurt us when it matters what most. What quarterback do you like in NCAA better than Will Howard? Right Kyle now? McCord. Kyle McCord. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Give me one. Um, Cam, Cam Ward. Cam Ward. And I wanted Cam Ward okay. so bad. Yeah, he's, he's really good, really isn't he? Like yeah. What if I told you he had 21 touchdown passes and five interceptions? Great. No, that's Will Howard's numbers. Great. <laughs> Great, yeah. because it's he's I, again. I don't need Will Howard to throw forty touchdowns. We've talked about this. Yeah, you yeah. don't need him to. Listen, Trent Dilfer won a Super Bowl. He had the not, best defense in the history of the NFL. But but what? But what did he didn't lose the yeah, game for his right, team, right? right and right. and I'm not saying, and I'm really not trying to know, to no, trumpet we, this whole Will Howard because oh, he, he has had some because the election last oh, night. That's not Oh my God! This is why. This is why we can't have nice things. I, but you know, at some point, right? This, the conversation does You're have to go he's to. Throw I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, terrified I know, I know. that because there's also not a lot of attention that has gotten brought to his inability yeah, to protect the football. <laughs> well, you, you do have to make the point though. They don't win that football game without him, right? Sure. Okay. So, so he, he's like a I lot think of quarterbacks. Would have wanted to. Uh, You're, oh, really? Uh, Little Julian? No. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, he, <laughs> he's gonna make mistakes, but at the same time. <laughs> He bounces back. He just, I, he I will give him credit. He makes right. when those things happen. He doesn't hang his head. You don't no. see he he does he does come back and moxie. play. I love his. That's moxie. a great word, yeah, moxie. Yeah. Right? I mean, you yeah. throw you throw an interception. It's a pick six. You fumble the ball going out of the end zone to cost yourself your team a teammate. A lot of quarterbacks would have folded. I do think Kyle that, McCord would have. Yes, definitely. and I, I definitely do think that the biggest benefit that we have with Will Howard is his ability. He is his experience. He's played a lot of definitely. college football, yeah. and so he doesn't get rattled easily. He and he runs the football really well. Yeah. That's yeah. what sealed the game. And well, can let me finish real quick because yeah, sure. sure. my V Buckeye, right? I, yeah. I gave you my good, my bad, my V Buckeye, and it's it's Quinson Junkins, and it's not going to be oh. for the reason that you guys think that it is. All right, you guys watch the game start to finish, right? Mm -hmm. End of the game, driving out of the end zone, fifty going fifty yards to seal that one, eat the last five minutes of that clock. 
It's third and I forget what it was, third and five, third yeah, and yeah. six, something like that. Will Howard runs. He gets the first down. He slides, even though he had a completely open field in front no, of him. No, that was him, a smart move, And though. he could have ran to the end zone, and he would have gotten over 20 and a half, Financial and everything would have been great. <laughs> but instead, he decides to slide. <laughs> and I do funny. think it's a little poetic, right? He, yeah. he, a slide lost the game, and a slide won the, won the game, oh, right? I do true, like true. that. Yeah. And then when he got up, he was pointing towards you. Yeah. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah. But did you see the block? Oh, yeah. That Quinshawn Junkin yeah, set fantastic. to to spring Howard for that run. It doesn't matter that he wasn't carrying that ball, even after how well he had played and how well the run game had finally got going and he had a, a great game. It, it didn't matter. He didn't let it bother him that the ball wasn't in his hands to end the game. He went and did what he needed to do to help his team. He set that huge block. I mean, and, it, and he didn't move and fall back or chip. I mean, he went into that hole and he moved that linebacker. He did. And, you know, Ohio State goes on to win. So that's why he's my V-Buck. Okay. So are you turning in your I love Will Howard shirt? Are you finally turning? Are you keeping it? I can't remember. What, where are you at? Uh, I, let me find This week, it. are you liking He's them? He's the treasure of the fan club. Okay. No, let right. me find it. I, I may have filed it in the, uh, in, in the, in the trash can. <laughs> what do you got, Miles? <laughs> uh, the good. David Ibnosen, right? Have, have you ever seen Ibnosen, a better yeah. interception? Uh, was, takes, that was. I don't know that he meant to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, but he held on to it. Right. He stayed in. I mean, it all worked. It was absolutely amazing. You right? can't prove that yeah. he didn't do when it on purpose. The, when we saw it from the corner shot, I thought, Oh, they scored the touchdown, and then they slowed it down, and you're like, that's incredible. Yeah. I've never seen anything like that. Uh, yeah. the, the bad, I have, I have two. Um, Jim Knowles and the staff dancing afterwards, no. No, no let's, yes. let's uh, not. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. no. Kenny Rogers. Look, he's yeah. going up in age. He's going to break a hip. Yeah. You don't want that stuff, that hip right? Goes, you're done. Um, how about the bad two? Well, it could be good for us. Play calling on the goal line by Penn State. What yeah. are you, what are you doing, Franklin, man? What are you Franklin. doing? Well, and I, I'm glad you brought that up because I'm watching it going, oh, they're going to they're gonna, – it's going to be an option. They're going to fake it up the middle because every time that Drew Aller did it, all three plays, yeah. he just walked around the edge. It's true. If he just ho- pulls it back, he walks into the end zone. He did but, it in the first half. But yeah. they just yeah. kept going up the middle. I, I'm like, here it comes, here it comes, and it never came. And I'm like – you're on the goal line. It's first happening. and goal. Your quarterback's six foot four, two hundred and twenty pounds. Sneak the ball three times. What? What? What are we? Why are you trying? Well, to he's got a bad this? knee, right? Well, or how about this? The giant that you snapped it to to run the thirty-eight yards. Yeah. Put him back there. Right. Let him yeah. run straight in, right? Yeah. Um, uh, but the Buckeye Danny, uh, and I'm gonna give a shout out to the cafeteria staff at, at the Woody Hayes facility mm-hmm. because, as you know, the guys they will eat at the Woody Hayes, right? And mm-hmm. and this is what happened. It's a story that has not gotten out but I'm going to break it, okay? Breaking Remember news. all the, the problems Ohio State had on their offensive line, right? right? And who's going to play left guard? Who's going to play left tackle? Yeah. Well, Justin Fry, the offensive line coach on Thursday, normally loves to drink chocolate milk with his breakfast at the Woody Hayes. Yeah. Out of chocolate milk. <gasps> they bring him white milk, and on the backside of the white milk carton, it says... Missing, ju- uh, missing Carson Hinsman, oh, and there's a man. picture of Carson Hinsman, and it, it, all of a sudden Justin Fry remembers. I have this guy oh, that can really play left good. guard. Yeah. He started 12 games yeah, for us really last good. year as a redshirt freshman. I know what we could do. Let's put a kid that plays with passion and aggression at left guard who's against really Penn State, who's yeah. good. So the cafeteria staff at the Woody Hayes that's really a, saved the season. Yeah, awesome. it's great. Yeah. Worked out well. Uh, my good is the offensive line for Ohio State. I, easy I, way I, out. Yeah, it is yeah. an easy way, <laughs> way, easy right? way out. It's, yeah. it's, it's number one. I mean, we haven't seen passion and, and play like that in, in years. And uh, they did it on the road. They did it at Penn State in a hostile environment. They did it backed up on the goal line. The fourth quarter with five minutes to go, they mauled those guys. It wasn't even close. And, and I love that. I, I don't give Justin Fry. I the credit. I give the guys credit because they were out there doing it. Um, the bad for me is the lack sometimes of focus on that offense. There was a stretch in the third quarter where we couldn't move the ball. We were, you know, bad throws, bad run. It's just there's a little bit of lack of execution. Do you think that's Chip Kelly trying to be all oh, my my offense is so pretty? Let's run these things. I got them on my play sheet. Yeah. No, no, I, I just, don't. I, I just, I, I think it's college kids, man. It's 19, 20, 21 year old kids. They lose focus. Or, or Penn State's really good on defense. I, and I said that <laughs> yeah. too. I, th- I well, thought, well, but State also t- times, I mean, they miss wide open throws. There should have been a walk in touchdown. Yeah, I mean, you really should have been 28 3. Right. Eight. I mean, yeah. there, so there were a lot of mistakes that, you know, 
I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. I, Will Howard's great. <laughs> my Buckeye. <laughs> my, my the Buckeyes, too. And I agree with you 100%. Carson Hinsman was fantastic. And Donovan Jackson. Donovan Jackson is a is a guard. And he's an NFL guard. And they move him out to left tackle. And he's got to go into the number one pass rusher in the country. And look, he gave up a sack. I get it. And some pressures. But I thought he was fantastic. I thought he was fabulous. How cool is it to see offensive linemen play with nasty aggression yeah. and some passion and, and, and fist pump in the air after a great block and well, not, not these, I must block somebody, no joy Donovan guys. Jackson made a ton of money on Saturday because he showed the NFL he's versatile. Yep. I can play left tackle. I can play guard wherever you want me. Well, and the talk there. going in was he didn't want to play there, right? He's going to because this is what he came back to do, but he didn't want to yeah. be there because that's not where he saw himself project as an to. NFL. But now, even if he didn't want to play there, like you just said, I can, and I can do it at a high level. Yeah. Michael, is James Franklin the coach at Penn State next year? Terrible record against the Buckeyes. I mean, outside of his record against the Buckeyes, he's not he's <laughs> not, he's not too bad, is he? He's not too bad outside keep of the him, Buckeyes. Keep him. <laughs> I mean, yeah, for the Buckeyes say keep him. Yeah, is he the coach next year, Moss? I don't think so. I don't think so I, either. No, I, I think what's going to happen is Penn State fan is finally going to get their frustration and not realize that they are really a third or fourth team uh, pro program in the Big Ten, and they're going to say, you know what, let's get rid of James Franklin because we want to be one or two, and they won't be, and they'll hire some guy for a year or two, and they're going to win seven, eight games, and then they're going to regress and be really bad. Bad. And James Franklin will probably go somewhere in the SEC and make all kinds of money. Uh, I think he will be. I, I let me with a caveat. If he's not, it's his choice. Hmm. He I went, said that he earlier went, this He week. went somewhere else wow. to go do something. I don't think Penn State fires him. I think if he wants to stay at Penn State, he will stay there. The, the expectations. I've been saying this all week. The expectation at Penn State is vastly different than an expectation at Ohio State. So yeah, his record against Ohio State is not good. But that fan base can live with that because he's not going to lose another game this season. They're going to go to the playoff. They're going to be a talking point nationally. They may win a playoff game. They're going to be in another big game. They're going to be relevant. That's all that really matters. And, again, I still think that he has a lot of goodwill built up for when he came into that program and where they were to where he's kept them. So they, they make the playoffs – Get beaten round one. Everybody in Happy Valley is still happy. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think that it's enough to make them unhappy to the point where like we have to move on type of situation. Mm -hmm. Guys, last week we picked our top three teams to make it to Canton. This week you can only pick two. We'll start with you, Miles. Um, so uh, Maria Stein's got a little team. Oh, yeah, I've heard uh, yeah, of them. Marion Local. We, we really should do these segments and say we can't pick Marion Local. Yeah, we're all picking Marion Local. It's a gimme, though. It's a gimme. <laughs> it's a layup. Um, yeah. And then I'm going to go with uh, Wapa Canetta. I, I just love their makeup, and I love the fact that when you talk to any of those Wapa Canetta team uh, guys on that team, and he's said what was it like playing Shawnee and and they would say Michael Garlic wouldn't block and it's oh. like, so I, I, I love those guys shot uh, you, uh, for me so I'm gonna go a little differently because I you know I we all I think would say Marion local all these things so let me look let me look somewhere else you took one of mine I I, I say Walpock division three is very difficult they're gonna have a lot of tough teams they have to Absolutely. go against but I do think that with the way that their offense plays they can be in the game to me it's gonna come down to that defense and there's people who'll be like oh well the, I, I've heard people in Walpock talk about the defense and it may be having some holes or having some dents here and oh. there. They gave up 13 points a game. Oh. <laughs> so I, I think with a defense that good, I think with an offense that's capable of doing that, you can run the football effectively. You can throw the ball effectively. Those are what makes dangerous teams in the postseason. So give me Walpock. And the other one is this isn't going to make me super popular with my LCC people, but I think it's Columbus Grove. Yeah, I, I think I think they Grove. Beat Marion local to get there <laughs> and, but I think I, I do think that Columbus Grove has the makeup of a team that can make a deep run I, I'm pretending we live in a world where Marion Local doesn't exist well I've said, and, well, I've said for a long time but that I think they that they, would they be a great Marion matchup the best right shot of, of, of beating somebody because know? because of that run game and mm -hmm. because of what Barraza can do and they're getting better at quarterback right they're doing all this with a third string quarterback who's getting experience and who's getting better Landon Best maybe is coming back has anybody heard anything about I've, I've yeah no so Either way, whether he does or he's not, they are still being effective throwing the ball when they can. They're not they're not a one-dimensional team. We know that Andy Schaefer is a good coach. He's going to have that offensive offensive and defensive sides ready to go. So I think Columbus Grove has an opportunity as well. Michael, any any two teams 
I was going to say Columbus Grove and Walpock, but... Don't, don't say it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Columbus Grove is past LCC. I don't, I don't think anybody's going to beat them outside Marion Local. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with Marion Local, Walpock. No surprise there. I just, But yeah, I'll say this. I think Walpock's going to roll this weekend over Wilmington. And that week three is going to be really tough because you said it. Division three is sure really is. Yes. good. Yeah, they have is. to go down south. They have to go in the Dayton and Cincinnati area. And you're talking about, you know, s- some really, really good teams, especially when you get down to the Catholic leagues down there, bigger schools. It, it is it is brutal. Um, they've not got a state title yet. I hope they get one this year. Uh, Marion Local, I think they're an absolute lock. Oh, I would have I, I thought you would say Minster. Well, I thought about that, okay. but uh, you said I'd, only two. You said only two. Yeah, those are right, my, yeah. my two. Well, yeah. like, unfortunately, Minster couldn't score against Marion Local yeah. either. I mean, look, we at the end of the day, I think everybody thinks you know Marion Local is the class of that D seven, and everybody and else six, is just and five and, and right. four. <laughs> I, I do have one question before we get out of here. I know we yeah. picked two, and I know we're talking about Canton. It's a little off topic, right? But what we, nobody picked them, and I'm a little bit surprised that none of us said this team. What about the Bluffton Pirates in D six? Honestly, I, I thought about Bluffton, but I'll tell you this. I, I thought they were bullied against Columbus Grove. Very much so. Well, and, and do I you think, think that there's a big hangover from that game? Because no. they haven't looked the same. I, I, no. 21-6 last week. Yeah. Paul I, right, I thought but they, they were bullied, and I, and I thought to myself, when you get deep into the playoffs – if you don't have that moxie, there's that word mm. again, I, I don't see it. Well, really it's not don't. just moxie. It's physicality on the yeah. line of scrimmage. Yeah. And they were flat out beaten by Columbus Grove. Wait, and scrimmage. I wondered if there was a little bit of a hangover going into that Paulding matchup. You know, that Paulding team, you know, I know it was a 116 matchup, but that was a 7-3 and three Paulding uh, yeah, team. Yeah. You know, I don't, a really it, weak GMC. And it, it, but not a good GMC team. And so you wonder if, okay, we, we had a horrible Week 10. Everything that could have went wrong went wrong. They didn't look like a team that we thought we were going to yeah. see that week. They go into week 11, and, you know, that you, everybody would have thought, okay, Bluffton's going to get back. We're going to have this dominating performance. So now maybe some people are writing Bluffton off. But, you know, Coach Richards gets them going again. I mean, I, that's a team that I can see if they get things right. They, 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 they are dangerous. If they are just one-dimensional, though, like they were against Columbus Grove, they could not run the football. And then you have the sophomore who threw three interceptions, take Gieske at quarterback. You're asking him to carry the load offensively. Not sure he's equipped to do that in a deep run. Before we get out of here, guys, you're going to pick one player from Northwest Ohio to start on your brand new team who would it can be? I, can I go first? Yeah, can I go first? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not taking him. You're not taking him. Take him. Broken Steffi. I'm Danny up and I'm saying, I got Broken Steffi with my first pick. You drafted first. Who yeah. you got, Nate? Uh, you know, for me, it's I'm going to go with Barraza. Uh, you know, I think that just his versatility and what he can do on the game. I mean, you can – hand him the ball 40 times in a game and they and, do <laughs> and he, you know he's going to run the ball and pound the rock and i think if you're going to start a team to be successful you got to be able to run who you got michael you get one caleb moyer caleb oh, moyer nice. Great nice. Pick. I like yeah. that one yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah make sure he throws a pick early no now, now yeah. if i'm starting a team from scratch i'm going with a freshman quarterback i'm going back to lips oh, i'm going nice. mark kirkendall nice. he's I a like freshman yeah. man yeah does anybody else feel like he put this in this just so he could go back to that knowing that <laughs> yeah. none of us yeah. were going to take him <laughs> i just got my pick <laughs> the pick is in yeah well if you're listening to this we had to edit this section because when i took brogan steffi we had to stop recording because danny started crying i did i was yeah. crying I was we'll corner. have to fix that hole in the wall too like <laughs> the chair is not supposed to go there danny uh, hey michael thanks for coming in brother yeah, thanks we for having me absolutely Absolutely. Michael Garlock, our special guest tonight. Miles Holiday, Nate Garlock, Danny Holbrook. It's been the three wise men. Wish you nothing but success, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys.